And now, it's time for another episode of the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A show made by 12s from around the world, for 12s around the world. I'm Azem, and here is your host and my dad, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Moses, and welcome to episode 708 the Saints edition of your 12-man fan jam show as your Seattle Seahawks get ready to take on the New Orleans Saints. And what can I tell you? When the Saints come marching into Seattle, it's going to be painful for who that nation. Aye. Let's meet the posse for this episode. First off, oh, look, our news hound, Will. Hi, Will. Hi, Moses. How are you? Wonderful. How are you, sir? Eh, a little sore today. Um, I made the mistake of trying on a Marcus Mariota jersey, and uh, Calais Campbell sacked me for a 10-yard loss. And the kids love it. Well done. Well said. Um, well, I hope you feel better soon. Thanks. Uh, and also, oh, look. Hey, kids. I know you're just down applauding, but look, there's Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hey, how's it going? Great, Dustin. How are you? I'm good. This is a big week for us. That was it was kind is. of fun. It is. And how is the 12-man fan jam show mascot, Kona, your dog? Oh, she's good. We put some uh, some special effort into getting the backyard fixed for her and her, her sister Marley uh, this yeah. week. We uh, leveled out the backyard a little bit, yes. and we put in some uh, some turf, some pet turf back there. Fair, it looks really nice. I got to oh, tell you, you, I've been looking it. on Facebook. Yeah, no problem. And, of course, our man behind enemy lines is Statsman Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, everybody. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Dustin, did you win the other dog in trivia? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I beat hmm. Matt. But it didn't count. But it was preseason, so it doesn't really count. Preseason, right? Real, is it real, another German Shepherd? I free, is it like she's a? Well, we're told she's a Boxer Malinois mix, but uh, okay. I, I don't think I buy it. She's. I think she's too small for that. I think that the Humane Society was just guessing. So, yeah, probably. <laughs> and I yeah. liked Will mentioning. Oh, I forgot that he had this nickname. Uh, Jaguars, what uh, Saxonville? Oh, they're, they're you know. Oh. I think it's a little bit too early to start. Do uh, but nine yeah. sacks? Is that what they had in that game? Yep. Wow. Wow. Well, look at the competition. Um, real quick, sadly, the Ying to my Yang Matt from Mary Old England cannot be with us for this episode. He is he's, apparently he's out partying it up somewhere after enjoying Statsman Mark's enormous spreads from last week, and after beating everyone <laughs> Party in, in the sleep old from UK. last week. Yeah, and a- after beating everyone in his sleep, which apparently he likes to do that, so he'll uh, he'll hopefully join us next week. Uh, gentlemen, is, are you ready for the Saints? Yeah, uh, I've been preparing all week. That sounds like you go, are you ready to rock? And one guy goes, yeah, rock! Right. Yeah, man. yeah. All right. Gentlemen, let's, <laughs> let's get to it. Sweet. <laughs> Show's run just like a real NFL football game. Four quarters and a halftime. Quarter one, Will will catch us up with the news. Uh, quarter two, we will recap that Steeler victory last week, 28-26 over the Pittsburgh Steelers, and go over our predictions, prognostications, and game balls. Always a treat. Halftime is the best Seahawks-themed trivia game on the internet. I refer to, of course, 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. Of the world. Of the world. Of the world. <laughs> and, uh, Sorry, line. I accidentally had muted my mic. <laughs> line of the world. Uh, Will uh, Matt won last week, and since he's not here to re- re- reclaim his title, there'll be a new champion this week. Quarter threes will be a little different. Uh, we're going to have our injuries with Dr. Dustin. We're going to have a weather report by me because I am no fashion goddess and uh, the numbers by Mark. And we, we, we're we going to have a sermon. We might have a visit, guys. I've been working on this. Maybe I've been sending an invitation out to Cajun Man, big, big uh, Saints fan, that hopefully we can get in the show a third quarter for a quick interview. And then we put out all our information, put our predictions, prognostications, and game balls into quarter four. Uh, before we start, we'd like to remind you to like, share, subscribe to the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Join us on our Facebook group, 12 Man Fan Jam Show. Also, Twitter and email. Look for us on a downloadable podcast of this very show on iTunes and Podbean. Take us wherever you go this weekend. Make us part of your Seahawk pregame fix. And let's get to the first quarter and news. Yes, news from around the NFL with our new sound, Will. Brought to you by this week's sponsor, the Chris Carson Football with easy-to-use handles. Never lose the ball again with the Chris Carson football with easy to grip handles. Will, what you got for us? Well, Moses, anybody who's going to the Seahawks game or any NFL game this weekend will notice something a little bit different. Uh, the 
pregame introductions will be a little less uh, flammable. Um, <laughs> Because as it turns out, the uh, Dolphins and or the Jets didn't have the most spectacular flame out last weekend. Uh, that honor would go to whoever was running the uh, pyrotechnics at the Tennessee Titans game. And, um, you know, the pictures have been all over um, the news, social media and everything. One of their uh, flame machines uh, got a little too flamey um, and burst into fire, burned the field. They had to uh, put it out. It was pretty crazy. Um, and as a result, the league announced uh, a couple days ago that they have uh, prohibited all on-field pyrotechnics and flame effects uh, oh, for now. you got to be kidding me. While a review mm. proceeds regarding the fire that happened last Sunday at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. so We'll just take that ball right away from you. You're going to poke someone's eye out. Well, well I'll, it's the I'll no-fun league for a reason. I'll tell you one thing. When uh, the post-Super Bowl rally uh, after we won Super Bowl Forty Eight. Uh, I, uh, my group and I were actually ended up in the 300 level right above the tunnel, which I'd never sat there before. And, um, they had the flame machines there too. Mm. And even up in the 300 level, you can feel the heat just pouring oh. off of those things. It's warm which was, down there. Yeah. Which was great then because, you know, it was 15 degrees outside that True. day. That was a cold but, day. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully yeah, they get I this had, uh, sorted out. What I had heard is what went up in flames were Goodell's uh, disciplinary <laughs> no fire. doubt. Nah, dumpster fire. Yeah, well, it's ironic. It was the the Tennessee Titans because they are still a dumpster fire. Apparently, I don't That's like it. that at all, man. That's part of the cool thing when the like at the Seahawks games they roll out these um these Seahawks. They got it's like a, a cylinder or whatever, and it's got the Seahawks stuff on it, and then the flames come out the top of it and everything. That well, stuff's fun. Well, listen, don't worry, because I fixed it. What's going to happen is at the home game on Sunday, I've arranged it where they're going to bring a box, a huge box out, and when the team hits the field, Rip Taylor's going to jump out and throw confetti at everyone. Oh, that's, Rip that's, Taylor! That's, that's much better. That's old reference. Works yes. for me. I wonder if there was some music playing just before the whole thing went up in flames. <laughs> Near my God to the E or something like that. The field. The field. The, the field, field is, is on, on fire. fire. <laughs> yeah, we don't need no water. <laughs> Let this stupid football team burn. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that well that, that story was hot. That was hot. I was waiting for the tiki sound. But... <laughs> there was no controversy. But let's, okay, let's say. Well, uh, no, I was saying it would be, be the music just before the guy lit the, the wick, like in the oh, cartoon. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Like... So it would be. And they light it. Yep. I get it. Oh, yep. And I said, uh, well, that story was hot. What else you got? Well, Moses, I generally don't enjoy taking pleasure in others' misfortune. No. But when never. it's the 49ers, I, I <laughs> indulge myself a little bit. <laughs> don't we all, my friend? Don't we all? And in this case, um, there's a growing dispute between the 49ers and uh, their home city of Santa Clara. Uh, which uh, whose city council voted unanimously to terminate the agreement with the team as to concerts and other non-football activities at Levi's Stadium, oh my God. contending that the 49ers have, quote, grossly mismanaged those operations. <laughs> oh, goodness. Said, said city attorney Brian Doyle, we have hit rock bottom and we have nothing to lose. The 49ers oh. responded, after city manager Deanna Santana's dysfunction with respect to stadium events was exposed, she has chosen to spiral even further. Her actions are purely retaliatory, and we are not surprised that she has commenced yet another legal battle. Wow. She's abdicating her fiduciary duty by destroying a city asset for petty political vendettas. My goodness. And in case you're wondering... The 49ers have 35 years left on their lease at uh, <laughs> Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. You know what, Will? I had no idea that the phone call I had placed to the city would have this kind of outcome. I just... <laughs> no idea. Well, well, why, why didn't you do it sooner? Well done, Mark. Is her name, well, really, is her name really Deanna Santana? That is awesome. Yes. Yes, and that sounds like a very distant run. Well, blah, 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 blah. take really? two of Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to spit that out. Boy, that was difficult. <laughs> Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana, well, the, and well, Deanna the, Santana. The final straw was that it was rumored there was going to be a Bengals concert in that stadium. That's when I had to call. I said, you know, <laughs> I'm not walking like an Egyptian. I have to call my therapist. Oh, not playing. Bengals. 
Yeah, look it up, kids. They were musicians in the 80s. Girl band. Oh, and the other SF story was that Jimmy Garoppolo apparently broke up with his porn star girlfriend. They're wondering if that's going to no. affect the, uh, the, the, the line. Oh, no. Terrible. Wait, Terrible. Did, you, did you say Tragic. he had a porn star girlfriend? Yes. Because you know, Mark. Oh, and, and I got the ice cream man outside of my window. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. I'll- I'd like something off the menu. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. I mean, then. drugs. I mean, yeah. no. <laughs> if that's the case, let's let Mark finish his <laughs> transaction. Yeah, there we go. And let's, and let's move on to the end of the first quarter. Will, thank you, as usual, for great stories. You're welcome. Anytime. All right. That was the news. It's the end of the first quarter, Oh my goodness, the end of a rather interesting first quarter. Coming up on the Saints edition of your 12 Man Fan Jam show, we got trivia, we got weather, we got injuries, we got numbers. We might have a visit from Cajun Man. But up next, we're going to take a look back at last Sunday's victory over the Steelers, and we'll do that right after this. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam show, a Seahawk Positivity production. Holy sh! It's the second quarter. All right, your second quarter of episode 708 of your 12 Man Fan Jam show. Uh, we're going to take a look back in this quarter from last week's win in Pittsburgh, 28-26. The Seahawks beat the Steelers. Uh, Will, what was your thoughts about this game? Something good, something to work on. Well, um, I thought their defense had our number uh, early. Um, I liked how we kept uh, Roethlisberger in check early in the game, too, though, so it didn't uh, get away from us. But my favorite thing, uh, looking back at this game, was um, just our ability to uh, make adjustments on the fly. Uh, You know, because they were getting a really good pass rush, uh, having a distressingly easy time getting to the quarterback. And we actually changed the way uh, that we attacked them. We went to more of a quick passing game, got the ball out of Wilson's hands early, uh, neutralized their pass rush. And that's something that we really haven't seen much since uh, Schottenheimer uh, was hired last year. I think that's a good sign for the Hawks going forward, um, just the flexibility to say, okay, well, this isn't working. All right, well, we'll do this and um, put <clears throat> put the ball in Wilson's hands, have him win it for us, which he did. Or, you know, if, they're, if Wilson's having trouble, then switching and going the other way. But I like, I like the adaptability. I like the flexibility. Um, I like that we can win games multiple ways and... Um, that's we're going to have to moving forward. So that was a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I saw something where we were sacked four times in the first, what, 20 minutes of that game. <laughs> and then, yep. but, but no, okay. But you laugh, but then we made an adjustment and he wasn't sacked the rest of the time. So over almost three full quarters over, over 40 or well, almost 40 minutes of him not being sacked because we made an adjustment and, and wound up throwing for 300 yards, making that adjustment. So we did make an adjustment finally. Uh, most of us were screaming, please, God, soon. But it did happen. And once it happened, good things happened. I agree with you. And, um, yeah, nice to see the offense really seem to click, um, especially the, the passing game. There's so many weapons on this team. And when when they're when they're on, you had you had Lockett with 10 catches. You had Metcalf with a touchdown. You had Disley with two touchdowns. That's pretty potent. Yeah. Um, Mark, what's your thoughts about the game? Well, first off, I was impressed with me because I was uh, in in the four percentile who started Will Disley in this fan. Nice, <laughs> strong work, <laughs> cool. I yeah. love it. I, yeah, and, yeah. I thought real hard about that one. And yes, no, you anyway, did. um, you know what? It, a few things about this game. I was, you know, going into Pittsburgh is never fun, but we knew this was a totally different Pittsburgh team. No AB, no Bell. I, I was wondering about Ben and his health. I had no idea about the arm, but just, you know, in terms of, uh, well, actually I did draft him in one league, but anyway, I just wondered about that team. I think Tomlin is burned out. When I look at that guy, his eyes yeah. look, he looks like he's had shell shock, just dealing with all yeah. this garbage in that town. And I like the guy and I yeah. think he's still a great coach, but what I liked about the game was, you know, we got into a, a rhythm Early, I mean, we were hanging around. It wasn't like Carson up the middle for a yard, Carson up the middle for two yards, and now it's third and seven. And uh-huh. 
finally, and I wish he would do this opening drive, flip the script, as everyone else mentioned, and we finally get the ball out of Wilson's hand. Get get these guys in rhythm. Give give mm-hmm. you know just get it out of your hand. Now I know you can't do that every single play, every single drive, but it was so nice to see. And then once we went ahead, it, you just start to get that good feeling. We've all seen road games, a million of them with Seattle, and you start to get that inner gut feeling where you know I think they're going to win this game. You know. Mm-hmm. Even with like a full quarter left, you just you feel it, and that's what happened. And they're two and zero, and it's. I mean, it, I'm so happy for like Carol. He just seems to be re- having a real good time. And happy birthday to Pete, right? And and all the guys seem to really like him. They respond to him. Yeah, Al yeah, are important. out of the locker room. I love Bennett and Et Herman forever, but I'm glad they're gone. I don't know. Yeah, that, that, I, I rambled on there, but oh, no, I no. like this team and I like the spirit. Well, you know, we're getting. I, I just looked it up. 18 carries. Um, I'm sorry, 16 carries. 81 yards, and and that's what got me, and all it does not speak. But for me, I found myself saying, I can't believe I'm saying this, the passing game's working great. I love the passing game, but, man, we were running effectively, too. A five yards a carry in that game, and I felt like we were running the ball pretty darn well. Now, you're right. If everyone in the nation knows we're going to run on first down, it's pretty, you know, second and nine comes up. But if you could run, you know, throw on first down every once in a while, mix that up, and not be so predictable when you run. I thought we were running pretty effectively, even though I loved the passing game. And don't get me wrong, I thought everything was clicking on offense. And it really showed how scary this offense could maybe be in the future. Uh, Dustin, what are your thoughts? Um, I got a few of them about this game. Uh, first thing is a lot of times going into a season, uh, the coaches, you know, they do their coach speak thing. And uh, one of the things that Shoddy said was that the offense is going to be dangerous because with the personnel they have right now and the experience they have, they can play any type of game that they need to play to win. Yeah, and it's kind of nice that Pete, uh, Pete even admitted he kind of let Shoddy go this game. And uh, dink and dunk is not something that Pete likes to do, but that's essentially what we did. Yeah, and uh, it was effective because we adjusted and we made things happen. And uh, I thought that was great that it's kind of showing the synergy there and showing that yeah, not only can we do it, but we will do it when we need yes. to. Yes. And and then uh, another thing was uh, Tyler Lockett's ten catches. Love that. And the reason yeah. why, I I think it goes back to the previous game. Because I, I was under the impression this year that with Baldwin being gone and Tyler Lockett coming in, that Tyler Lockett was going to get the Doug Baldwin treatment. Meaning that um, he was going to be the focus of the passing game that they try and take away and make the other receivers beat you. Well, in the Bengals game, Metcalf showed that he could go out there and make plays too. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think that's what set up Lockett's game against the Steelers because yep. it was proven that he can't, you can't just take him out. You have to focus on everybody. Mm-hmm. So uh, that, that was huge to see. And I, yes. and I think that bodes well for the rest of the season. I agree. Well said, well said um, something that really drove me crazy when they were getting sacks at the beginning and those four sacks in 20 minutes were making my hair, pull my hair out, but they showed a play and they showed Disley, you know, going up the field. And I'm like, you know, uh, come on, this is this is offense. I even I know this. When your quarterback is getting blitzed, you cut that route. I mean, I'm not blaming him. He probably didn't have a choice here, but they weren't cutting those short passing, like you said, the short crossing routes. They were going deep on those balls that he was getting sacked in, so nobody was open. And I'm like, dude, we've got to start going across the middle. And I remember the first couple passes over the middle. I stood up and applauded and said, "Thank God, finally!" And then everything started to fall into place. I mean, it just felt like. They weren't even trying to help Russell when he was blitzing. Like they were like, "You're going to go deep, and that's it. You can't break it off just because he's getting blitzed." And that drove me crazy at the beginning. But that was the first quarter. I think part of that speaks to the nature of the team traditionally, though, since Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll have been there, because he's always been elusive enough to uh, avoid that stuff and make things happen. Yeah. But they were bringing more people to rush than we had people to block, which is right. crazy. They're bringing the house down here every yes. time it felt like. It did. So, which is why I think Schottenheimer was able to talk Pete into, hey, just let me let me try this and let's see how this goes. And it worked. Yep. And a couple mistakes. Carson, some unbelievably costly fumbles. Oh, my God. One, the one at the end could not have come at a worse time. You're up by nine. Oh, with, my God. <laughs> with six to go. And you're like, I turned to my son and I, That's I, him and I said, it's, this is over. This game is over. I'm calling it. We're up by nine with six to go. And the worst possible thing. Oh, so it's your thing. fault. Yeah, basically. Uh, the worst possible thing Dennis. happened. 
I know. The, Dennis, I flash back to being a child watching Seahawk football in yeah, like 1981, right? yes. and it was like, yes. oh my yeah. god, here we I, go again. Right. And I actually when, said that when, I when I had when I had as thick and long as Jim Zorn himself at the time. Uh, but uh, oh my god, what are yeah, we talking about? Uh, hair, back when, when, hair. When, oh, okay, gotcha. Back when, uh, yes. So it, no. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, not yeah, that yeah. much of a fan. No, I just, uh, yes, back in the day when we would just give away a game inexplicably yeah. or, or a Dave Craig yeah. moment. Those were always fun, too. And if you think about we gave them two really short fields and, you know, people who look at the score go, well, they won by two. Well, they won by two, but they, they gave them some pretty short fields, too. So you can't really I can't blame the defense on 26 points, especially when you give them the ball at the three. But that being no, said, they did the best that they, yeah, they did the best they could. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So that being said, another great victory. Let's uh, let's let's go ahead and go to the two minute warning and see how we did on our predictions. Holy sh! It's a two minute warning. Yes, the two minute warning where we look back and look at our posse prediction challenge because we thought it'd be a great idea to take five people and challenge them with our prognostications, our game balls, and our scores. Famous last uh, words. Yeah. Uh, first on the scores last week, twenty eight twenty six, a point for stats for Mark. Yeah, twenty four twenty three. Way to go. Uh, however, Mike Pascal did get a two points for a Seahawk win, um, and it was a two point Seahawk win, so he got the two point differential. Even though he had nineteen seventeen, it was a two point Seahawk win. Uh, prognostications: one point for Tom and Little Mo, who had Metcalf TD. Uh, I believe Will, you had Metcalf TD, but you decided to change. Story of my life. Yeah. Uh, game ball: one for Mark Ty Turner. Even though he had the Seahawks losing, he was smart enough to put Disley as a game ball, and that gave him. Uh, a uh, game ball with Disley, and then uh, Matt for Lockett, 10, 10, 10 uh, catches for Lockett. He gets a game ball, too. Uh, the over and under was over. Uh, only three people said over. No, only two people said over. That was Sassaman, Mark, and Matt. So um, our scores look like this after week or for week two. Uh, Mike Pascal at two. Matt at two. Statsman Mark at two. Tom Littlemo and Mark Ty Turner at one. Meaning overall scores look like this. Mike Pascal at four. Jose, Mark Ty Turner, and Matt at three. Statsman Mark at two. Little Mo, Tom, Dustin, Will at one. Meaning overall our score looks like this after two games. Team 12, 12. Team Posse, seven. Go Hawks. They're right there. They're so close. We can almost touch them. But let's not touch them. Because there are lo- rules. Yeah, no. Let's go to halftime! Holy sh! it's halftime! Coming up, so much more show. Is Cajun French or English? Who dat? Is who dat proper English? Who knows? And will Cajun Man be making an appearance on this show in the third quarter? <laughs> All these answers and more just around the corner. But first, another rousy edition of 12 Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. And that's coming up. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A Seahawk Positivity Production. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's halftime, and welcome to another fun filled edition of the best play along Seahawk themed trivia game show on the internet. It's time for 12 Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. And here's your host, the self appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, me, and welcome to another fine edition of 12 Man Show Halftime Trivia. Of the world! The trivia game that tests the knowledge of both our listeners and our posse. Our contestants are the posse themselves, Dustin, Stasman, Mark, and Will. And here be damn dare rules, though. So here's how the trivia game works. There'll be two rounds of questions. Each contestant answers one question each round. If they get it correct, they get one point. After two rounds of questions, there'll be a final trivia question worth two points. If there's a tie after that, then the tie players go on to a special secret overtime question where the winner becomes reigning 12-man fan jam show trivia champion and also gets a prize chosen especially for them. As an added bonus to those listening on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel, the questions and possible answers will be displayed on your screen so you, the viewer and listener, can play along as well. If you do, please let us know how you did on the questions. Remember, there's no Googling, no phone a friend, and please... No wagering. However, there is a lifeline. Before taping this show, my two charming Seahawk fan children, Mosette and Little Mo, did take the quiz as well. 
If the contestants want to know what the kids said, they can ask that, but once and only once during the entire game show and only in the first two rounds. Now let's get ready to play 12 Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. <laughs> All right, you know the rules. Um, the question each in the first two rounds. Uh, we had a champion was Matt last time, but before that it was Mark. So Mark, I'm going to give you one, two, or three. Which would you like to have? A three. Mark takes three. Dustin, one or two? Two. That means Will gets one. And of course, you know, one question is going to be a little bit different. And Will, you do not have that question. You have a football question. Well, that's a first. <clears throat> yeah, I know. It's been a while for you. Um, I would like to change my answer. <laughs> Too late. Will, uh, the first time the Seahawks beat the Saints was back in 1979. Do you remember that? Uh, seeing as how I was two, uh, no. Okay. Uh, well, the question is, how many touchdown passes did Archie Manning throw for the Saints in that game? That's right. I said Archie Manning. How many touchdown passes did Archie Manning throw for the Saints against Seattle in 1979? Dance! Um, what are the options? Zero, one, or two. Um... Hmm. Eh, I'll go zero. I'll go zero. Little Mo went zero. Mosette went zero. You went zero. Now, I'm sorry. He, he, he did throw one. Yeah. Just. I, I, I was kind of hoping, like last week, you'd show, you'd play the, uh, um, the little the chime wind. and say, "Oh no, nope, wait, nope, you got nope. it wrong." Sorry, sorry, incorrect. Throw a flag, challenge flag. No, I'm sorry. That was wrong. Uh, Dustin. Yeah. Do uh, you remember Marshawn Lynch's Beast Quake touchdown against New Orleans in 2011? Yeah, that actually happened on my birthday. Well, happy birthday to you. So here's my question. You might know this. How birthday? long was I the, do. H- how long was the Marshawn Lynch Beast Quake touchdown oh. against New Orleans? Was actually, it, I, I don't know. Was it 63 yards, 67 yards, or 71 yards? How long was Beast Quake? Against New Orleans, 63, 67, or 71? Actually, I actually didn't realize it was in the 60s. I thought it was the 50s. So I'll say uh-huh. 63. So he'll go, he'll go low. How low can you go? You can go 63 low. Um, Mosette said 67. Little Mo said 71. You said 63. <clears throat> nah, it was 67. 67. Ah. Did you know that, Will? You groaned. Yep, I knew that. Okay. That's too bad. My other answer is going to be 65. I didn't hear you say 67. I thought you said 65, so I was wrong either way. <clears throat> Did I say 67? I thought yeah. you said 65. Oh. I just I heard it wrong, I guess. Yeah. All right. I wouldn't be so you know, I've done things on this show, especially at trivia. I just let it all Things happen. he's not proud of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, how you doing there, buddy? Uh, you know, I can already tell you're buttering me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because there, there's was... only... There's only so much you can do. It's either going to be Dennis or the ice cream well, man doing it, apparently. This is a musical. This is a musical one for, for him. Uh, and this is about the group Orleans. I don't know if you're familiar. Are you familiar with the group Orleans? <laughs> what Can you, can you uh, point me in the right decade? Well, yeah, I sure can. Uh, it was 1976. Nice. And there was a band called Orleans, and they had a hit in the charts. Their biggest hit ever, actually, believe it or not. And it was this little ditty. Called Still the One. Hmm. Yes, thank you. Oh, no kidding. Still the One. I know and, that song. Yeah. So, here's what I want to know. Where where did... Where did this song peak? Did it peak at number five? Did it peak at number three? Or did it peak at number two? On the Billboard Hot 100. 1976. Wow. Band Orleans had their biggest hit with their song Still the One. Where did this song peak on the Billboard Hot 100? Number five, number three, or number two? I was uh, I was hoping you were going to ask me which which of the big three networks because there was no box at the time. Which of the big three networks had this as their network? Uh, I think theme it was song. ABC, wasn't it? It was, and see, yeah. I actually yep. that was a Rain Man moment that did yeah, not. Yeah, uh, nice, nice. Kick in uh, for this. Anyway, I'm going to say a uh, five. He's going to say five. You don't like this song that much, then, huh? I just think of ABC, kind of like Bosom Buddies, <laughs> about this time. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you think oh, it can't possibly be any good? Oh my god, I'm turning. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna just turn into an old man. Like I'm, yeah. I might as well be doing like Henny Youngman ah. references. The, well, Lil Mo said number. Get three. off my lawn. Mosette said number two. You said number five. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! It was what? a hail Mary in the spirit of Matt. What? The the doorbell rang. Wow, Mark wow. with a point. Woo! I'm on fire. Like. I know. So, Mark, you have a point. The other two have none, so you get to pick four, five, or six. Well, it's times like these, but Minshew, gardener of good and evil. <laughs> five. Five. Uh, Will, four, six. Six. And that would be Dustin with number four. I'm going to go first. You want to go first? Yeah. All right. Number four. <clears throat> this is about the Battle of New Orleans. The Battle of New Orleans was the last major military conflict of what war? The Civil War, oh. the French and Indian War, or the War of 1812? I actually don't can know I, this. Can I, get I remember the song? <laughs> I would have been better off with the song. Oh. Wait, oh, Dustin, you okay, did you go to what? California you public Oregon. schools? Was that? <laughs> I said, did you go to California public schools? No, I definitely went to Washington Public Schools, but uh, <laughs> you have to pay attention, and that's the key. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The the Orleans has left. you got to have that Oregon. Uh, I'll say it again. The Battle of New Orleans was the last major military conflict of what war? Which war? The Civil War, the French and Indian War, or the War of 1812? I don't know. The French Indian War sounds awesome because, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of French going on in uh, New oh, Orleans. I must but, uh, wait. Fighting Ziva. Yeah, but I'll go. I'll go Civil War. I'll go Civil War. Okay. Uh, Lil Mo and Mosette went French and Indian War. You and they're in school currently, so they probably went, are right. You went Civil War, but they're in Indiana schools, which means yeah, no, no. Uh, War of 1812, right? Will. Yep. <laughs> Will has been burned twice tonight. <clears throat> hey Moses, when was that war fought? Uh, I believe in 1812. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it wasn't wasn't the lyrics like in eighteen and sixteen we took a little trip down to New Orleans down the mighty Mississippi 14, or something. I thought it was. Was that? I thought it was yeah, eighteen fourteen. Battle, battle was in eighteen fourteen. Yeah. No, okay. But the War of eighteen twelve started eighteen twelve. Gotcha. Yeah, there you go. A little history for you. Hey, Mark. Hey. When the Seahawks beat the Saints in Seattle in two thousand thirteen, that was a great game. How many times? Yes, it was. Was Saints quarterback Drew Brees sacked zero one or two. How many times did we sack Drew Brees zero one or two in that game? Well, uh, it's time uh, for those uh, Indiana. Ed <laughs> you would ask the kids. Yes. Mosette said once. Little Mo said twice. Wow, and that oh, and I'm missing my cue three times. No, you know three, what? Yeah. Um, okay, zero one or two. I am going to say. You're going I'll go to go with, uh, yes, uh, little, little Mo said two. Little Mo said two. Are you going with two? Yep. Mark's going with two. Mark, I can't believe it. Nah, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I oh, believe it. Oh, that was a major sight. Really? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it won. <laughs> Only sacked once. I know it feels like so many more, but it wasn't. We just dominated, but it wasn't by sex. Um,. Will. Man, that was that was intense. That was like no doorbell sound for you. Yeah, no good. <laughs> hey, Will, when the Seahawks beat the Saints in Seattle in 2003, how many touchdowns did Sean Alexander score in that game? Zero, one, or two? Hmm. Hmm. 2003. Yep. That was the... Uh... Ken Hamlin uh, knocking Dante Stallworth yes. into oblivion. I was, game. Indeed I, was. was at, yep. I was at that game. That was the one game I went to that year. Well, you should know this. How many touchdowns did Alexander score? One, zero, one, or two? Well, I was drinking heavily at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was also there and also doing the same. <laughs> well, I was actually sober for this game, so let's hope I can get it right. Um, in the spirit of uh, Thursday's holiday, uh, Talk Like a Pirate Day, Arr. Arr. I say he got two touchdowns, yes, scurvy dogs. He be getting two <laughs> touchdowns, say you. Well, little Mo Mosette also said that. And you shut up because you're right. 
one one catching and one running, I believe. So, cool. Will and Mark have a point. Dustin it has no points, but hey, Dustin, yeah, d- don't worry, you know why? Why? Time for a final question. Oh, so it's a football question. Final question. Uh, closest without going over uh, gets it. And if you all, all three go over, the one that's closest to the number gets the two points and is reigning 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia champ until next week. Oh, all right. Well. Your order is Dustin, Will, and Mark. And here we go. Are you ready? Dustin, are you ready? Ready as I'm going to be. All right. In that playoff game between the Seahawks and the Saints in 2014, the, the famous beast mode. No. No. Uh, yeah, that's not right. That's not right. The playoff It's game one of the few Seahawks games that Saints. Percy Harvin actually played for yeah, us. How many rushing yards did Marshawn Lynch have in that game? Which one are we talking about? The... 2014, I apologize. Super Bowl year. Yeah. Oh, okay. How many yards did Marshawn Lynch have in that game? 23-15, remember? Uh, I remember the, uh, the year. I remember uh, Percy yeah. Harvin got knocked out. Yeah, he did. And I remember the Seahawks winning, which was also good. All good. Do you remember how many yards Marshawn Lynch ran for? No, uh, no. That escapes me. Yeah. How about I'll say he ran for ninety-two. Ninety-two. Well, that game was a bit of a grind. I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna hearken back to one of the earlier answers and go sixty-seven. Sixty-seven, ninety-two, Mark. How many yards? Okay, how many yards? 6792. I have no idea on this. Um, I'm going to say 75. I'm going to go in the middle. Going in the middle, 75. All right. In that Super Bowl year, 2315, that grinder game that we had, the amount of yards that Marshawn Lynch ran for were 140. Dustin! Wow. Oh. What? Wow, okay. Three-way tie? No way, man. Two points, you win. Ah, okay. Wow. We only had one each, so. Thundercats, ho! Dustin comes from behind. Yes. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, not, not again. <laughs> yes, not again. <laughs> way to come from behind and beat him when you needed it. <laughs> you gotta like do that. what you gotta do. Yeah. In his sleep. <laughs> oh, my God. Congratulations, Dustin. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. And this has been another crowd-pleasing, heart-stopping, award-winning, amazing edition of your 12-man fan gym show halftime trivia. Of the world. Of the world! We'll be back in the second half of the show. But before we go, Thundercats, take us... Hello! You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A Seahawk Positivity Production. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Holy sh! It's the third quarter! Alright, welcome to the third quarter of your 12 Man Fan Jam Show. And it's time to start talking about our Seahawks as they get ready to take on the New Orleans Saints at 1.25 p.m. Pacific Time this Sunday in Seattle. Should be a great matchup. And um, one thing we like to do on the 12-Man Fan Jam show uh, when we have the opportunity is to reach out to uh, opposing fan bases, get their take on things, you know, have a little fun. So uh, in the spirit of this, uh, the 12-Man Fan Jam show is proud to present a special interview with one of the New Orleans Saints' most diehard fans. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is Cajun Man. Will Harrison! Cajun Man, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, invitation! Yes, I'm glad you got our invitation. So, Cajun Man, your Saints coming to Seattle 1-1. One and one. Are you happy with your coach? Sean Payton! Yes, Sean Payton. Do you like him? Offensive genius! Yeah, but, you know, you lost Drew Brees with an injured thumb. Devastation. How are you dealing with uh, the the loss of Drew Brees? Depression. 
Well, that would make me sad, too. Inebriation. Oh, you're drinking, you poor guy. Hey, at least you have Teddy Bridgewater. Irritation. Well, I'm sure he'll be able to handle the crowd in Seattle. Aggravation. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure he'll be a little confused. Incompletion. Probably a lot of those for sure this Sunday for Bridgewater. Interception. Well, hopefully a few of those too. Um, yeah, doesn't look good for your team here on Sunday, Cajun Man, I gotta say. No celebration. So, if, if your Saints lose, um, what are you gonna do to deal with it? Paps Blue Ribbon. Oh, a lot, I bet. Intoxication. Well, be safe on Sunday, on Sunday, Cajun Man. Hibernation. Staying home? Yeah, good plan. Appreciation! Cajun Man, everyone! Cajun Man! Will Harrison! Okay, um, that was Cajun Man, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, big round of applause for him. And, you know, now it's time to see how healthy these teams are. Uh, and here on the 12-Man Fan Jam Show, we do this only one way, by turning to our own doctor... Dr. Dustin with the 12-Man Fan Jam Show Injury Report. Dr. Dustin, tell us the news! Doctor, doctor, give me the news. All right, guys. Um, I don't know if you can hear. Kona's out there making her presence known. Hopefully, Our uh, 12-Man that's... Fan Jam Show mascot, Kona. Kona! Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Kona I'm not sure what's going on out there, but yeah, she she's loud. She's got opinions. And All right. She's loud. She's proud. Get used to her. Go ahead. That's right. All right. So we're going to start out with the New Orleans Saints. I don't know if you heard. There's been an injury to one of their best players um, what? In, fr in franchise history. Not just what? in, you know, this year's team. Uh, Drew Brees, he's out. He hurt his thumb. Oh, yes, yeah. he did. Yeah, he, he jacked it up pretty good, too. He had to have yeah. surgery and everything. So, you know, uh, big recovery to him. Uh, bad from we'll the play. see him so it's weird. Yeah. sometime. Not in that, the playoffs. That and, video of him trying to pick up a football was rather sad. It was, yeah. yeah. That was rough. Yeah. Um, so, Drew Brees is out. Uh, defensive end Sheldon Rankins is out. He has an Achilles injury he's dealing with. The, uh, he was limited in participation in practice. And then uh, wide receiver Traquan Smith. Also out. Ankle issue. I appreciate the Saints. I could pronounce all those names. Thank Yay! you. Yay! <laughs> For the Seattle Seahawks, uh, we have a couple doubtfuls. Uh, apparently, Ethan Post hurt his neck last week, and he's still yeah. sore from it, according to Pete Carroll. Yeah. Um, not sure what that's all about. Uh, I, I don't remember what happened during the game, but yeah, he hurt his neck. Um, Nico Thorpe, still nursing a hamstring injury. He's doubtful. And then we look at the questionables. Now, this list is interesting because there's one guy who is not a surprise, Tedrick Thompson. He was nursing an issue from uh, the previous week, didn't play last week. But then we got Trey Flowers and Rashad Penny. Uh, they both came up with injuries during practice this week. Yuck. Uh, Trey Flowers hurt his ankle. Uh, he rolled it. He's a game-time decision. Rashad Penny uh, hurt his hamstring. He's a game-time decision. Um, we have a couple notable returns. We have David Moore, fresh off his humorous, um, whatever they're calling it. Yeah, it wasn't very funny, but yeah. Yeah, he's playing. Uh, Puna Ford is back. Puna. Yep. Puna. And then, uh, this week, uh, we're going to go ahead and get Ziggy with it. Oh, no, 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 no. No! Are we? Yeah. Love yep. It. Carol has said he will play. Yep. He's going to go ahead and play this week. <laughs> And then I just want to throw this out there. Mm, Rashad Penny. Uh, he might play. He's a game time decision. But even if he does play, his, his um, participation is probably going to be limited. So this is probably a pretty good week to jump on that pro size train. That dude's going to get you uh, reps. What do you say? You saying it might be time? I think it might be time. It might be time. Join the pro size train. Pro size train. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm. Yep. 
Procise? Procise? Procise. Yeah. <laughs> Join in, people. Still room. Procise train. Ah, oh, yes. Could happen. This could be the big moment we've all been waiting for, especially Dustin and Mark. But uh, that's good stuff, Dustin. I love getting Ziggy with it. That's good. That's good. That was very nice. And, and now comes the time when we usually turn uh, our, our attention to weather and fashion. But uh, we're going to look at the weather by turning to a guy living in Indiana because, quite frankly, I am no fashion guy. So uh, the 12 May Fa- Fan Jam Show weather report with me from Indiana, O. Moses. It's right. Yes, thank you, me. It looks like there might be a slight chance of rain on Sunday and a high around 65 to 54. Either way, it looks like perfect Seahawks football weather. Uh, does that give us an advantage, Will, if we're raining or not? Uh, well, it could. I mean, anytime you face a dome team and they got to deal with the elements, you got to yeah. figure it's something they're not quite as used to. And a team that's, they do have a running attack, but let's be honest, it's it's more passing for them. We, we would be a better mutter, I would think. If there was mud, you know, Hello, field mudder, and all that. Yeah, but but we'd be a better a better team ready for rain, I would hope, being in Seattle. But who knows? Um, here's one thing we do. Uh, a guy that always has our number, the man with numbers and tokens all around him. It is time for the Stats Man Market and 12 Man <laughs> Fan Jam show by the numbers for our game and maybe a couple of teasers more. Break it on, lose that number. 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 <laughs> you know, as it turns out, I may be doing a, a, a several-hour drive to beautiful Lake Tahoe to <laughs> gamble with fellow daydreamers. Um, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll review quickly. Last week, uh, so week one was three and two. Last week, two and three. So, of uh, course, here, I am a perfect square better at five and five. Um, I hit on uh, Seattle plus four, of course. Um and uh, this one was this one was daring. I took Atlanta over Philly. Now going into that game, a lot of people thought Philly would win. I thought the Falcons. Matt Ryan manages to show up at home, and uh, I got a point and a half that I didn't need. But I, I missed on my. Uh, of course, I had the uh, big point spreads uh, spreads last week uh, flipped. I took Baltimore, and I should have taken Arizona. And then I took Miami plus nineteen. But when you uh, put nineteen under forty three, uh, you get. <laughs> 24 uh, <laughs> points they were they were quite a bit shy of uh yeah. making a game of that anyway so so what you're saying three, what you're saying is we did not we did not enjoy your big spreads uh, no they were uh you know yeah. they, they went limp um uh, yeah, yeah so oh, yikes. rough week um <laughs> oh dear any, yeah anyway uh under my breath uh let's see here so week three now uh, again these these large spreads Dennis are are back again, oh, and this the time spreads. In the spirit of Matt, we're gonna eat it all. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> Matt, we love you, brother. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Matt, open wide. <laughs> Sorry. If we're gonna do New England, we're gonna oh lay God. twenty-two points. We're gonna take New England, and we're coughing up twenty-two <laughs> points. Post lay the, the lumber. Jets, because only the Jets can add nothing to the twenty-two that they're given. <laughs> At the start of the game. And we're going to follow it. It's a double feature. We're going to get Dallas giving 21 and a half points to the Dolphins oh with God. Josh Rosen starting. So <laughs> uh, they're throwing Rosen into the fire, man. It's going to be Old Testament <laughs> in Big D. <laughs> oh, then. You know how I feel about Rosen. That's not good. This there. is. Oh, man. he's It's just like death of a QB salesman. <laughs> that kid. Okay. Now, in the spirit of, you know, thinking outside of the box a little bit here. Um, I'm going to go Detroit in Philadelphia plus six points. We're taking Detroit on the road. That is, I don't know. That's, that's, well, it's hard to describe, (laughs) but it takes, it takes a little courage. Okay. (laughs) Then Arizona is actually going to, I think they're going to win the game outright. They're hosting Carolina. You get two and a half points at home with Arizona. I think they're going to beat Carolina. I don't even know if Cam's playing at this point, but I got this line earlier. It's called line shopping. So even if, even if uh, Arizona becomes a favorite, it's still Arizona plus two and a half, 
when I when I looked at the game. And of course, uh, Seahawks minus four. I think we're going to win by at least a touchdown. Yeah. And so there are, uh, after all of my bad one liners, there are the picks uh, for this week. What's the over under for our game? Oops, geez, I never. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> I believe you cued me to write down 44 and a half. Dennis, I did so. indeed, sir. Yes, 44 <laughs> and a half. Well done. Well Thank fed. Um, and quick disclaimer, these numbers have been preserved, uh, pre- presented for entertainment purposes only. They're not preserved. I uh, told me Fan Jam Show does not endorse betting on anything or anything we say. Please don't take anything we say seriously. And real quick note, Adam Sandler was not hurt in the making of the Cajun Man skit at the beginning of this quarter. Thank you, Mark, so very, very, very much for your hard work. Yeah, we're we're eating a lot of chalk this uh, this week. <laughs> and now it is time for a quick reading from the self-appointed Reverend Moses from the Saint Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Oh, Reverend. Yes, this is your Reverend Moses from the Saint Paul Allen Church Seahawk Positivity. Gentlemen, how are we this evening? Doing well. Doing well. You got them Cajuns out there. <clears throat> Very nice. Cajuns. Yes, we, we don't know we don't know what they're Cajun, but I guess we'll find out later. And uh, they, they speak very strange down there in Louisiana. They eat a lot of gumbo, I guess. Anyway, we have a reading here from the book of the 2019 NFL season, chapter 3, verses 3 to 12. Returning home victorious, they were met by those who traveled from the land of gumbo. Those of a saintly way did come into our land, and they did want to defeat us. But Seahawk positivity was too strong. It met those from the land of Cajuns that sent them back with a loud roar. For those who stand in the way of Seahawk positivity and its power do not stand for long, as they are sent down to defeat. Yes, this is the power of Seahawk positivity, my brethren. Go forth, go forth, and spread the good word of Seahawk positivity. Praise Largent. Praise Cortez, praise Walter Jones, praise Kenny Easley. Go Hawks! And now I remind you, this is the end of the third quarter, and you're listening to the 12-man Fan Jam Show, because when the Saints come marching in, they're going to go limping out. Take us home! You're listening to the 12-man Fan Jam Show. A Seahawk Positivity Production. Are we having fun yet? Holy sh! it's the fourth quarter! Okay, it is our fourth and final quarter of this episode of the 12-Man Fan Jam Show. In this quarter, we put everything together. We make our predictions, our prognostications, and of course, our games while for the upcoming game between your Seattle Seahawks and those New Orleans Saints. All right, let's look at our picks. Let's start with Team 12 first. Jose said score 24-13. Game ball to Clowney. Prognostication, Saints get more sacks because, well, Effetti. That's what he said. I'm not throwing that in. That's exactly what Jose sent me. Tom, I think that even with Breeze out, it'll be close. 30-24 Seahawks, Carson, 100 100 all-purpose yards, game ball to Carson. So that's 100 catching and running. Little Mo said 28-17. He thinks the Seahawks will have at least two interceptions, and the game ball will go to Carson. And Mark Ty Turner. Said, two wins by a total of three points. This team is bringing me no relief. Losing Breeze is a huge for the Seahawks, or for the Saints, but they probably have the best backup in the league, and Bridgewater is getting a full week of practice with the starters. At the University of Washington, actually, this team is staying in Seattle rather than fly back across the country. That's a smart move. Uh, This will be another tight game. He has the Hawks winning 24-20. He's giving his game ball to Penny, so that may hurt him. He says it will be a controversial call against the Hawks that will have the clink and a tizzy, it will be viewed as a makeup call for all the zebra arrows the Saints have endured lately. Okay, we'll see. Mike Pascal also had Seahawks 24 13. Clowney with two sacks and game ball to Clowney. Now for Team Posse, Matt, who is not with us, of course. Uh, Seahawks 26, Saints 17. Prognostication the Seahawks get a safety. He's going for a safety and a game ball to lock it. Will! Ah! Hi. Hi there. Always good hearing from you, sir. Yeah, good to t- hear from you too. Yeah, pretty soon I'm. I, we'll talk about the Ravens game maybe next week a little bit, a little foreshadowing. Be coming up for the Ravens game, but uh, let's not talk about the <laughs> Ravens game right now. Let's talk about the Saints game. Well, what you got? Well, you know, I think it's going to be another gr- bit of a grind. Um, 
New Orleans has uh, done well getting after the passer so far this year. So we won in week one by one point. We won in week two by two points. So I'm going to continue the trend. I have Seattle <laughs> winning 20 to 17. Nice. Oh, three point spread there. Um, my prognostication is that uh, CJ Procise will run for a touchdown and catch oh. a touchdown oh. in Rashad Penny's absence. Go big or go home. Nice. And I'm giving my and I'm giving my game ball to Procise because oh. I don't know how many. Oh my how much, goodness! How nice. many more games I'll have the opportunity to oh do so? Oh my goodness! Somebody getting on the train. The ProSize train has been boarded by Will. Toot toot. All aboard for ProSize. All right. Um, so that's me, Mark. See. Hi. Hello. Hey, Mark. You you talked earlier about uh, the quarterback from the Jaguars a little bit. Yes, about Minshew. Yeah, and what did you say about him? Good and evil. <laughs> Because <laughs> he kind of looks like a, a a '70s porn star. You just said it, right? He he, he does. Uh, I'm not sure if he's a diggler, but uh, well. you know, we we already know that. Uh, yes, there he is. You know, I keep the music handy. James Franco starring in. See, Minshew. and you have James Franco playing him in the movie <laughs> of his life. I it would had... be a Lifetime Channel extraordinary. Yeah, I don't think it'd be a Lifetime. This is a Cinemax one. I. I, I... <laughs> I had Paul Rudd from Anchorman with the with the Fontana mustache. That right there says it all, I think. Yep. But uh, all right, enough about. And what were you gonna call it, Minshew? Uh, Minshew. I can, well, I can, I can play around with it. I, I originally I think Minshew, the gardener of good and evil. I think that's what I'm <laughs> sticking with. Very nice. I I thought please the Minshew would be good, but. You know. Ooh, oh, man, ESPN, yeah. Scott Van Pelt, all over that. No, no, th this is definitely a Cinemax show, but... Uh, right. Oh, 30 all for right. 30 would be good. Gardner Minshew, 30 for 30, an nice. Uncle Rico story. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of Minshew, you know, we uh, I'm going to segue right into my little little Perfect. spiel. See? And, and we, we have our own beast, not beast mode, but we got a, 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 a Vin Disley. Oh, whatever. Uncle Will, yeah. Vin Dissel. Uncle Will. Yeah, Uncle Will, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, I think he is going to uh, score another touchdown. Um, and is that your be, prognostication? That'll be my prognostication, because I think that if he, well, you know, it's going out a little bit on the limb, I don't know. Yeah, it is. Anyway, or maybe not. Or in the spirit of Good Team enough. 12. Oops, no. Oh! Oh, oh, I know. Ooh. I know, another diss. Another ooh. diss. Oh, dear. Another diss. diss. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, score wise, I'm going to say uh, I think that we're going to be able to create some turnovers, get a couple shorter fields. I like us in this game, thirty to twenty. Thirty. Thirty to twenty. Yep. Okay, I thought you said thirty to twenty. You're saying thirty. The thirty. Yeah, it's, yeah. Thir thirty twenty. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yep. And who's yep. your game ball? Is it Disley then? Uh, no, I am going to. I'm going to go Carson. Ah. I think he'll redeem himself. All right. At home. Okay. At I home. think he will, too. Hi, Dustin. Hey, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, how's Kona doing? she all right now? Yeah, she's calmed down. I haven't heard her for a little bit. Yeah. Well, you know, if you gave your dog, you know, some NyQuil, she'd pass right out. You don't have to worry about her. She I'm, just I'm just kidding. Don't do that to your dog. <laughs> I'm don't not actually looking into that. Just, no. you know, playing along. You may not want to do that. Probably not. No. Um, hey, you got a score, prognostication, game ball, that kind of stuff? I do indeed. All oh, of those great. things. Please share. All right. Won't so we? I'm going to say the Seahawks are going to win 31-17. Okay. Uh, prognostication, I'm going to say ProSize is going to get 100 yards. <gasps> I don't know if it's going to be uh, combined. Riding the train. Yep, yep. Get on board. If that happens, Dustin deserves two bonus points. If he, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think so too. But I'm not gonna do that. All right the the game ball. I'm a little more torn wait, about. Wait, wait. Was that precise? Precise. Okay, go ahead. 100 yards combined offense, uh, rushing and catching. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Who's your game ball? Uh, that that one's a little tougher because I, I think that the focus of the Saints' uh, offense is going to be Alvin Kamara. 
And I think that means one of our linebackers is going to have to play exceptionally well because they're going to be tasked out to handle him. Ooh. And Bobby being in the middle, I don't wow. think it's going to be Bobby, so I'm going to say I'll go Kendricks. He'll get the game ball for Ooh. taking Kamara out of it, out of the game. Kendricks, interesting. Okay. We got that pro size train, baby. You know what that means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, my turn. You know, the big easy comes to town. And no, I'm not talking about Statsman and Mark's token women. I'm talking about New Orleans. Yes, New Orleans, land of gumbo, crawfish, and people who speak either English with a bad French accent or French with a bad English American accent. I don't know. It's some language down there. Cajuns. Cajuns. Sounds like a verb to describe something that needs to be done after a, after a Raiders game with their fans. Cajun, right? Cajun all. But uh, the Saints come into town, or do they march into town? I don't know, either way, it's going to suck for them, but I digress. The Saints are playing without Drew. Does my birthmark make my face look small breeze? But uh, with Sean Payton, they still have Sean Payton, who always seems to look like he just lost $100 on the under in Vegas because of a late-game field goal. You ever see that? Um, the Saints are also going to be led by Teddy Bridgewater, who will be more appropriately nicknamed Teddy Bridge over Troubled Water this Sunday as the Seahawks sack him more than twice. That's my prognostication. Offensively, my game ball, Uncle Will Disley, will catch more balls than a prostitute on Bourbon Street as the Seahawks win by a score of Seattle Seahawks 27, Nolan Saints 16, Aye! Book it! Wow. What a show. And we know we have a lot of shows. And I gotta tell you guys, this was one of them. So. Um, you know, you just might be right there. I, I think it was one of them. We learned a lot tonight, didn't we? We learned a lot on this show. We always learn a lot. I mean, we learned that, you know, Will got beat up wearing a Titans jersey. We I had it at, coming. To we be learned fair. that Mark Mark called on the 49ers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we did not enjoy your big spreads, but but you are making Matt eat it all, oh whatever my. that means. And um, we learned that Deanna Santana might be the best name I've ever heard in my life. So, <laughs> on behalf of my partner, Cry Matt, who's not here, our new sound Shadowhawk will Statsman Mark Dustin as the beat. Mike Pascal, Roger Goodell, Mark Ty Turner, Jose Tom, Mosette, Little Mo, Chuck Muncy, Deuce Garden McAllister, <laughs> Bobby Abair, <laughs> and of course, our new friend, Deanna Santana. This is Moses saying until next time, go Hawks. Go, go Hawks. Go Hawks. Hey, that's a that's a good show right there. You just put that put some put some put some onions, some crawfish in there. You got a nice sugar. <laughs> oh my.